Hi, I'm Sharon Tang and this is the Evening Highlights. The latest on 1MDB's unaccounted for billions. The Wall Street Journal says the fund sent at least 850 million US dollars last year to an offshore entity set up to appear to be IPIC owned ABBA Investments. Now, if you recall a couple of months back, the WSJ reported about two missing payments that 1MDB says it made to Abu Dhabi's IPIC. The payments, amounting to 2.4 billion US dollars, were collateral for the loan guarantees provided on 1MDB's bonds. But IPIC reportedly said it didn't receive any of the money. Now, according to WSJ's article today, 1MDB did transfer some funds, just not to IPIC's ABBA Investments. Instead, the money went to an ABBA Investments registered in the British Virgin Islands. Citing people familiar with the matter, the WSJ said that IPIC and ABBA have concluded that neither of the two Abu Dhabi funds ever owned or controlled this British Virgin Islands company. 1MDB hasn't responded to a request for comment. The state fund, the brainchild of PM Dato Sri Najib Razak, has racked up 42 billion ringgit of debt. It's currently being probed for money laundering and graft. The government will keep an eye on crude oil prices to see if the decline is just a head fake or if it's going to stay below the 40 US dollar threshold. Minister in the Prime Minister's Department, Dato Sri Wahid Omar, says if under 40 really is the new normal, then a review of Budget 2016 would definitely be on the cards. The budget review isn't likely, if you asked Wahid. Despite the oil glut, he thinks prices will rebound next year. That's because he believes it's just not economical for some oil producers to keep selling oil at this level. I don't think the oil can be uh, at uh, such a low level for a prolonged period. Uh, so there'll come a time when we'll have to actually go back up because at the end of the day, uh, the revenue or the price of oil must uh, be higher than the cost of production. He explains that some Middle Eastern oil producers may have production cost as low as 20 US dollars per barrel. But in the US, he says, shale oil producers have production costs that exceed 40 US dollars per barrel. PM Najib delivered Budget 2016 in October based on the assumption that crude would average at 48 US dollars per barrel for next year. Spot Brent is currently trading below 38 US dollars per barrel. In January, the government was forced to revise its annual spending plan for 2015 on tumbling oil prices. Budget 2015 was based on oil prices averaging 110 US dollars per barrel. But by then, global crude had fallen by more than 50%. The government plans to set up at least one Bumi-only digital mall in every state starting next year. This just one week after the opening of Mara Digital Mall, once dubbed Laoyat 2. Rural and Regional Development Minister Dato Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob says the Mara Council is currently identifying possible locations for the ICT Mall. One option is to set up shop at its own existing buildings. Kita akan mulakan tahun depan. Uh, kita akan mulakan di ibu-ibu negeri dulu. Ya. Kita akan tengoklah yang mana yang sesuai dulu. Di, because ada beberapa uh, pusat perniagaan Mara yang perlukan sokongan. Seperti di Shah Alam. Kita ada Anggrek Mall dan kita ada beberapa lagi bangunan-bangunan uh, mara yang perlukan uh, apa nama perubahan pembaharuan uh, dari segi uh, perniagaan dan sebagainya The idea of a bumi only mall came up after a racial brawl at Laogat Plaza in July The first Mara Digital Mall opened last week less than 7 kilometers away from the tech hub in Bukit Bintang which is dominated by Chinese traders a look now at Scientax's first quarter numbers. The company says net profit doubled from a year ago on the back of stronger demand for consumer packaging and affordable properties. Net profit stood at nearly 61 million ringgit, a 101% increase from the 30 million posted the previous year. Revenue meanwhile rose 28%. This was thanks to higher consumer packaging sales due to expanded production capacity of existing operations as well as the contribution of its newly acquired subsidiary SGW Ipoh. 
Its property segment also contributed significantly to the company's revenue because of a strong take-up of recently launched projects and higher progress billings. Property revenue rose 43% to just under 160 million ringgit. At the close, Iron Tax was 6% higher at 9 ringgit and 15 sen. That's a market cap of about 1.95 billion ringgit. And that wraps up the evening highlights. I'm Sharon Tang. Thanks for watching.